Father, we are so grateful to be uh, here to represent the Cherokee people, and we ask for your uh, guidance, your wisdom, and uh, we ask that all things that we do today reflect well on you, and uh, that uh, the Cherokee people, and uh, ask for your continued blessings on this great nation. Amen. 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 Okay, you Mr. have... Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion here. Let us let us introduce the list. Well, it would be part of the list. Let's do roll call. Let's do, let's do okay. Let's do roll okay. call. Shelly. Thank you. Brian, you here? <laughs> Janice Taylor. Here. Neil England. Here. Dawson. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Harley Buzzard. Here. Joe Bird. Honey. Sean Crittenden. Honey. Don Garvin. Frankie Hargis. Present. Wanda Hatfield. Rex Jordan. Here. Dick Clay. I'm here. Curtis Snell. David Thornton. Honey. Victoria Vesquez. Honey. David Walking Stick. You can. Brian Warner. Honey. We do have a quorum. Okay, you have a suggested list in front of you. If they want additions to the list, do we need to? We make it, need to make a motion. Okay, that's what I thought. And a second before we get into so we'll get a discussion. Okay, so I have a motion. Can I have a second? second? Okay, I have a motion and a second on the list presented. We have uh, Kim Teehee and our Secretary of State. They'll be happy to answer any questions about the list. So, Councilor Thornton, did you want the floor? Yes, I want to <clears throat> add uh, Tom Stacks to that State House. He's a Democrat. I want to put $1,000. I'll second. <clears throat> so, I'll make a motion to do that. Second. And, Madam Chair, the administration has no objection to that. Do we need to do a motion and a second on each thing no. that the council brings, or can we? You can do it on each thing. You can do it in toto. I've seen it done both ways. Okay. You can, or you yes, can ask Jack. for a friendly amendment. Friendly, sir. Either way. Okay. Okay, and then I had one in House District 8. We actually have a <laughs> Cherokee citizen but running for that, Carl Parson. But we did have a motion in a second, so we do need to vote on it as a motion. Yeah. On the top stats. Oh, okay. So motion and second on that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Okay, so that one's fine. And Madam Chair, uh, <coughs> directing your attention to Mr. Parsons on line three. I think we got his first name wrong, but I think that uh, is the uh, candidate you're talking about. I must have a different list. It says yes. Chris, it says Parson. Chris Parson. It's number four down. Is this supposed to be? I'm sorry, directly. Earl Sears is number four. four on mine. It should be right above. Sorry Earl. about that. Line four. Chris Parson's number three. Right after Daryl Moore. Yeah, uh, on this list it is, but on the <laughs> first list I got it's not. So uh, if we could just change his name on that. What's his name? Carl. Okay, are there any other questions or suggestions? Councilor and Baker? And the amounts changed to 1,000. Is that correct? On? Parsons. They have 750. No, they've got the. You're good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, there are any questions? Councilor Anglin, go ahead and I'll get can, you next. Can we increase Sean? any that we feel like it deserves a little more and help us? Well, Madam Chair and Councilor, you know, this is it's always been a collaborative process so that both sides agree. Uh, certainly, if you want to propose an increase, we'd consider it. Um, and, and it's kind of how the process works. So, if you'd like to do that, just so I'm clear, um, I think we had a so our notes are clear. We can go to a motion and a second and an approval for Mr. Stites for a thousand. And I think we just recognize we had the name wrong on Mr. Parsons, yes. and he's at Correct. 750, of course, on this new list. And so I just want to make sure I'm up to speed. So sure. we're all ears on other, uh, and we decreased Daryl Moore to 750, but their current list shows them. Okay. 
Okay, and I did not hear what you said, Councilor Angle. Okay, so I was just asking if it was appropriate if we raised somebody we felt like it was a big, bigger impact for us. Okay. Uh, House District 74, uh, Jerry Mobley, who was the mayor, who was the mayor of Owasa, was the person that was instrumental in getting the Cherokee Nation to the table with Mason. So she pushed that all the way, and and I I, I talked to Miss Teehee about it and everything, and so. I just feel like she's proven that she she's out to help us out. I don't think just and just so we can explain this, you know, the, the the thinking behind some of these numbers was not reflective of whether or not they have served as well or not at all, or who served who most. It's we also were trying to strike a good balance, a bipartisan balance, mm -hmm. in in amounts there, um, and. Uh, um, you know, I don't know that we is Mr. Objections. Is Ms. Mobley running for an open seat council? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And is it a contested primary in the Democrat side that you know of? Not, not that I know. I'm not sure. Okay. The other way we look at it <coughs> is the, the cycle, of course, goes to November if she doesn't have a contested uh, primary, which we don't think she does either. Um, we will come back to the council later in the cycle, and we sort of want to see the candidates' performance. Are they, you know, out there? being competitive candidates. So that's why in many cases for an open seat, we didn't go above 500. It's not to say that okay, we wouldn't be agreeable, but just to let you know sort of our thinking. Okay. There's another another bite at the apple, if you would. I would support that as well, though, if you want, when the time comes. Councilor Austin. Uh, for future <laughs> reference, the notes regarding why we're supporting these people, are very inconsistent. We have like incumbent. Well, there's lots of incumbents that that ain't a reason to vote for them. <laughs> that alone is not much information. Uh, why does that mean we support them just because they're incumbent? Because there's others, the fact that they're an incumbent would be a good reason not to support them right now. Uh, so I would like to see uh, just because they're an incumbent there's probably a reason why we want to keep them in office, correct? I think that's fair, Counselor, and I think going forward we can flesh out that uh, column a bit. Um, just that all of these we, we vet pretty um, seriously, and I know what you're wanting is to see more of that vetting on, on the page, um, you know, just sort of randomly taking a look here. And, I'll even uh, reach across the aisle and look at a Republican. Scott Martin, I think, is poised to be in a leadership position, perhaps, or at least he's a senior person. And so it does say incumbent, but perhaps we can flesh it out a bit more. Um, and we will going forward. But these are uh, based on sort of our internal review of the candidates. Well, I might say Earl, that I. Earl Sears has absolutely nothing. We're not, we're not saying why we're supporting him. <laughs> I might say that I appreciate getting the list a few days ahead so that we can, anybody that's an incumbent has a record that's readily available online and you can check those things. Welcome, Steve. Uh, I, I know we got a state senate race with uh, Revis, Hires, Pemberton. Uh, what's y'all's strategy on that? Well, I think we've got in a month we'll know a bit more about that race because it's a crowded uh, primary That's uh, something we're, we're gonna fund after the I think we got to take a look at it our view of it was we take a look at it after the primary as the field is winnowed down a bit um, we're gonna be back to the council with another list and I uh, when's the next pack meeting we don't have it scheduled but I would see it would be post the primary which is June okay. the 26th uh, yeah. that sounds before good. The general. so before, before the general yeah. certainly okay. uh, we'll be back July or August uh, well, thanks sure. uh, Councilor Crittenden yeah just real quick someone just, uh, I'm not, uh, not ashamed to say that I need educated here real quick uh, on the amounts. You know, I've been in since August, so definitely know that I don't know a whole lot. But, um, it, just looking at this and like the past one, and some of the different different roadblocks that we may or may not run into, well, there's not funding for that. And there's, you know, just 
this or that. And educate me on why the, that's a whole lot of money. I'd be glad to respond, Councillor and Madam Chair. I mean, it, it, you know, I served on this body, and so you do occasionally have to reconcile the fact that uh, there may be uh, a need that you feel is unmet, and then we're spending money on campaign finance. I mean, those are thoughts that, as council members, certainly fair to have, and the citizens are fair to have. But let's look at the record. I mean, in the past five years, we have had a strategy of building partnerships in the Congress of the United States and in the state legislature. And we do that in a lot of ways. One of the ways we do that is in campaign finance spending. Now, I don't write these rules, and neither does Chief Baker, but we sure have to play by them. I and mean, we sure are in a system in which building relationships is in part on uh, investing in campaign finance. Now, I will say, and if you look across the United States, and you look at an organization the size of Cherokee Nation, with the size of our budget, the number of employees we have, the interest we have at the federal level and the state level, the sum is rather modest compared to other big entities that have to protect interest in the Congress of the United States and, the, and a state legislature, and even sometimes in other states. So why does it matter that we build these relationships? Well, when we need to go into Congress and say, look, this is not quid pro quo, quo. we don't expect to give a donation and get, a, get some vote, but what we do want is a relationship. We do want you know, access to members of Congress to have conversations because we have great ideas. Now, not everybody with great ideas gets heard in the Congress of the United States. Now, that's not my doing. That's the way our system seems to work. But when we needed to go to Washington and talk about the joint venture which has resulted in the largest health care facility for an Indian tribe in the world, I mean, we had relationships that we had built through this process that we said, Senator, Congressman, we need your support because we think this is a great idea. Turns out it was a great idea to reopen the joint venture process on its own merits, but it's good to have those relationships built in, in part through campaign finance. You, I could go on and on on the federal level, Councilor, but let's look at the state level. This past session, fantasy sports came up in, in the legislative session. No one really expected it. Fantasy sports, that legislation, was a direct threat to the gaming compacts in this state. It was a direct threat to the Cherokee Nation. We had to act quickly, and we defeated that legislation. We defeated it to the point to the sp that the sponsor of that legislation said, out of respect for the Cherokee Nation, I'm withdrawing it. Now, that, that was a great moment, and we've had other moments, big and small, like that on the state level and the federal level. But to get there, you've got to build relationships. And so what I would say to my constituents, because the question was posed to me, is we've got to walk and chew gum at the same time. We've got to make sure we provide as much service as we can, but we've got to carve out some to build relationships, because the joint venture is a you know, $90 million a year, uh, un you know, just unprecedented facility in, in, in Indian country that's going to be a game changer. And part of that was from building relationships. Being able to protect our compact. I mean, had we not protected it through that legislation, counselors, we would have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars at a minimum litigating with the fantasy sports industry and the state for violating our compact. So some of this is an investment that at first glance you might say, I have an elder that has a leaky roof, and if we're spending a nickel on politics, that's a nickel too, many, too much. But the fact of the matter is we've got to walk and chew gum at the same time. We've got to be able to build relationships on Capitol Hill. We've got to build relationships in the state legislature. I think it's a modest sum in the grand scheme of what is sort of paid, paid in campaign finance, but we spend it very strategically. I mean, on the federal level, we have the lobbyists, which, which we pay for to give us advice. We have Kim Teehee, who uh, knows a great deal about Washington, how it works, accessing members of Congress. So we have a great team, and we spend a relatively modest <coughs> amount of money in the grand scheme of things very effectively, and we have a track record that I think I'd put up against any entity of our size in this country. And I think that uh, we ought to be proud to pass this. My, uh, you know, my faith in you guys is, should be apparent. Yes. Uh, and, you know, the joint venture, uh, I'm really proud to be a part of that. And, you know, if, if you're confident that kind of helped carve out some inroads, uh, you know, that's hard to argue with. You know, the state level, our economic impact on it, we really shouldn't have to get this dude $500 to vote no on fantasy sport because our economic impact is really great. But, but I 
appreciate what you what you had to say and it's a you know the joint venture thing I look so forward to that because that's going to eventually fill all of these clinics sure. and uh, so so I'm a fan well we, we appreciate your confidence counselor and you know whether it's on the state or federal level it's never about a check in exchange for a vote we would never do that we don't do that but what we need is access we need relationships and again donations to political candidates in a system that we have not the system we created the system we have is one way to build those relationships so you know, Indian Arts and Crafts Bill, which we just got passed. I mean, I watched Kim Teehee flip the vote of a state senator who listened to her argument. Her argument was righteous that we ought to pass that legislation. He changed his vote because she got in the door and was able to talk to him about the issue. Now, I would hope that everyone would let a constituent in or a citizen in to talk about an issue. But the fact of the matter is, when you are at the state capitol as much as we are, when you're doing not just campaign finance, but being there talking to legislatures, but you're also raising money. I mean, you do get uh, uh, a relationship built that somebody like Kim or me or Kaney can go in and say, look, we've got an issue. It's a righteous cause. I want you to listen if you would, and, and most of the time they do. So I, I feel that this is a, a great strategy, and it's been an effective strategy, and I do appreciate your support, Councilor. And as a numbers person, I want to point out a couple of things. Number one, you may not recall this, but back when we did the budget in August, we cut $100,000 from the political donations budget. And the administration said, okay, if that's how you feel, we'll, we'll do the best with what we have. And also, I don't have hard data on this at one time, I knew for sure, but something like 80% of our whole budget for the Cherokee Nation comes from sources other than our own you know our gaming and our own income it's it's grants it's federal programs it's stuff like that and so it all it is pieces of the pie and pieces of the puzzle that go together it, it's a bitter pill to me too I, I won't deny it when when I look at the hard figures but then when you look at the ripples you're creating with it well, you know appreciate that. it's one of those things you just have to swallow Sam go ahead yeah. and this is going to be kind of ironic, but uh, since you know this is going to pass, and uh, maybe if we figure, you know, I've talked about this before. I've got a Cherokee citizen right down the road from me. Uh, lives in Peavine, Oklahoma, and I know there's different avenues to look at this, but I would be very remiss as one his councilman not to uh, not to ask that we put Will Four Killer in for one thousand um, dollars. Councillor uh, the four killer race I think is a race that goes to November and what I would ask as I've asked other counselors is to defer some of those races to another PAC meeting when we've had a chance to get input uh, before the meeting and uh, be able to evaluate that race a little closer. But what we know about it is that it's a race that goes to November. It's not a primary that, uh, that that's looking at. So our main focus here has been primary. So I don't know that the administration can agree until we've had time to visit. Fortunately, because there'll be another PAC meeting this cycle, we'll have plenty of time to visit. Chair. Thank you. Councilor, I think they're saying what we'll do is <clears throat> at the next PAC meeting, we can consider that. I think that's what they're telling you. Are you good, Sean? Good. Councilor Austin? The, um, the next PAC meeting, the, the, this is, we're in the primary season. Uh, the general season happens less than a month from now, starts. Uh, so what's the... Um, but the overall, but like so much is spent during the primary and so much is budgeted during the general. Do we have the balances? Do you have that? Uh, from the changes that we made. Just a moment, Councillor. I know we. Yeah. Okay. So is this the total balance of that? No. No. 
Does anybody else have any items for <coughs> discussion Lee, while we're looking question. that up? You had a question. We can Go come ahead, back Dick. to his. Well, just, just to comment on, on the fantasy, fantasy games, I, I, it amazes me that somebody didn't grab the guy and jerk the bill out of his hand before he put it on the floor. That would have violated every state gaming compact with every tribe in the state of Oklahoma. I don't understand how he got as far as it did, but you know, we had some input, and and uh, we did. We acted the quickly. Lit the we litigation did. would have just been terrible. We this whole state would have been turned up if they don't want us to share our money with them. <laughs> my first thought, maybe that's not bad. You know, the guy might have gotten what he wished for and not liked. It, you know. uh, but I'm glad somebody was able to talk some sense into it. You know, Thank counselor, you. on daily fantasy sports. Also on the yeah. legislation regarding authority to fundamentally change the way compacts are approved between tribes and states and the Indian Arts Bill. We're even monitoring this cigarette tax discussion as it's taking place right now. Um, you know, in talking to our chief of staff, there has never been in recent times a more <coughs> state legislator on Indian issues. So it required us to take swift action to be organized about it that hadn't happened in a very long time in the state and so it was you know, chief baker's guidance you know representative hoskins experience, <coughs> you know, secretary hoskins savvy that we quickly quickly um rallied the other tribes and got a lot of letters of opposition we got articles written um, and it took a great deal of effort to educate legislators about about this that paid off the dividends for us with the compact debate and again in the Indian arts world and thanks to a uh, deputy speaker you know, she and other Indian artists came out strongly in support of the legislation uh, that helped to get us over the hump this year so it's it's a lot of relationships that we're uh, leveraging here I, I don't know if well, the legislators or the people of the state realize how much <coughs> money we pump into the economy of the state of Oklahoma and the compacts and our employees and our all the businesses that we run in this state, not just us. I mean, the 39 tribes, we're all, we give as much as we receive. Sometimes I wonder if we shouldn't go on a campaign to, to state our case more, more so than we do. Thank you. Kangan, have you got that figure for? Yes, ma'am. The remain if this was approved, the remaining balance would be sixty-eight thousand nine hundred. That's <coughs> the changes we've asked for today. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a motion and a second on this list. If there's no more discussion, let's move on into a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All righty. You guys can start writing checks. Uh, this meeting's adjourned at five o'clock.